Hi everyone, my name is Jordan Merkin. I teach math at San Marin High School, and today I want to give you a fly on the wall view of what my virtual classroom looks like. So today I actually filmed my entire lesson for geometry from start to finish so that you can have an idea of what things are like on my point of view. So a lot of you that are watching this are probably parents and you probably get little snippets of what we're saying or even what our lessons look like just every once in a while. And you probably wonder, what are we doing all day on the opposite end of that camera? So this is your sneak peek into my virtual classroom. I hope you find this video informative and I hope you enjoy. I am on our 10 minute break between classes. So I just finished teaching AP Calculus. Now I'm gonna be teaching Geometry. It's 10.33, so we start class in about seven minutes. So I'm just gonna show you how I get ready before Zooms. So I start by opening the day's lesson. I always have our lesson created on a PowerPoint. So I kind of go over the what, why, how, our agenda, and then I kind of have the agenda going with each of the activities that we are going to do for the day. And it always ends with their independent learning assignment, which is during that asynchronous time or tutorial time, and then their homework assignment. So I open that first. Then I need to get my Zoom started. So Zoom, we're in third period, and I hit start. Next, I had to go into Explorer and open the activity for today's Desmos. I actually made this activity and it's just an introductory trig activity. If you're about to teach trig and you're a teacher, this worked great. I used this activity last class and it's actually on my Teachers Pay Teachers and it's free to download. So I'll put the link to my Teachers Pay Teachers in the description of this video. And then finally, I'll show you what they see when they come in from the waiting room, which will be in about three minutes. So this is what they see when they come into class. Okay, I'm going to get started and start letting students in from the waiting room and we'll see the rest. <laughs> okay, so I'm about to let everyone into Zoom. Hi guys, good morning. Good morning. On your end, can you guys hear me clearly? Good, okay. And then just make sure that your cameras are on, guys. Okay, so we're missing just a few students. We have most of you here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on what we're gonna do today. So today, we are introducing you to some new topics. So we're gonna be doing trig today. We're gonna be doing sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are our three main trig functions that we're gonna be using. And these trig functions are going to allow us to find missing sides on right triangles. So your big classwork for today is actually going to be an introduction to these trig ratios. It's going to be a Desmos activity that you're going to be doing in breakout rooms with teams. And then your independent learning assignment, you have a trig video and some guided notes on the trig functions themselves, how to use them to set up equations and solve for missing sides of right triangles and then finally for homework you have some practice that goes along with the activity okay so our agenda the first thing we're actually going to do is go through and do some more special right triangles practice I got a lot of requests from students that want to do more with that and do more practice I don't think it's a bad idea so what we're gonna do is go on to Google classroom so let me share my screen with my iPad Oh, I have more people in the waiting room. You let them in. Okay, so go into your Google Classroom. Under today's classwork, sorry, it's a little delayed on your end. Go to today's classwork and there should be an attachment that says right triangle trigonometry more practice or 
Sorry, that should be special right triangles more practice. I don't know why it was titled like that. Okay, so special right triangles more practice. You're gonna be working on this in a team of, or actually just with a partner. So I want you to work through these four problems. When you, oh, there's a chat. Oh, okay. When you and your partner have finished working on these four problems, make sure they get uploaded to today's classwork so I can give you credit. And then we're going to all go over them together in class before we start the new material. So what I want to do first is get you in breakout rooms. When you and your partner are done, you guys are going to come back. So you're going to leave your breakout room once you finish the four problems. You're going to come back to the main room. Oh, I have another chat. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and go print it. That's fine. You're going to come back to the main room and you are going to, and then we're going to go over it together. So when you and your partner have finished, make sure you're working together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set up your breakout rooms. You're going to be with a partner. Are there any other questions before we get started? Oh, I have another one in the waiting room. Let me let her in and then we can get these breakout rooms going. I have Hello, sorry I'm late. It's okay. Okay, I think we have everyone now actually. Okay, we have all 24 of you. So now I will set up breakout rooms. Perfect, okay. Go ahead and get to work and then call me in if you and your partner need any help. Okay, <laughs> I am muted. All the students are now in breakout rooms. This is the time where I get to kind of breathe for a second. It's always just kind of overwhelming when they all just come into Zoom and then getting them started and getting everything set up. It's just like kind of my decompression time. So I like to have them do a little bit of review with a partner in breakout rooms to start my class periods. It also gives me an opportunity to take attendance. It's really nice because they changed our attendance system. I used to have to check a box for every single student and mark them here. Luckily now I can just like Put all here. But you can see it's kind of a struggle to actually get everyone in and logged in. Some students, their computer or internet lags, so they show up late, like when you're mid trying to set everything up. So it's definitely not easy getting class started. I'm already exhausted, and you know, I've already taught a class before this, but I'm already exhausted, and we're 10 minutes into class right now. So yeah, it is what it is. We're giving them the best education that we can with the way things are. My students actually do a decent job of talking with each other in their breakout rooms. Occasionally I'll pop in randomly and see like their cameras are turned off and they're on mute. But then usually once I go in, they're like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll check with each other. It's hard to tell if they actually interact or not, but they seem to. It's amazing when I pop into a breakout room randomly and they're actually talking and helping each other through things. That happened yesterday and I was like, oh, ah. but that doesn't always happen. So, so right now I'm sending everyone back from their breakout rooms. They did a little like four review problems from what we learned last class. And now we're gonna go over them together. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is share my screen and we're gonna go through these together. So these were a little trickier than some of the problems that we have done before. So special right triangles, we found some rules for these. So let's start at number one. So this triangle right here is a 45-45-90. And we learned that 45-45-90 triangles have a rule to them. So if one leg is X, what does the other leg have to be for a 45-45-90? Who remembers? Also. Also X, good. Let me turn my sound up. I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you, but it could be because you guys talked over each other. Okay. Then you take the length of your leg and you multiply it by what to get your hypotenuse? Who remembers? Give you a little hint. How's this symbol? Square root of two. Square root of two, good. Okay, so we have x, x, x root two. Root of three. 
Well, we're not there yet. <laughs> You're jumping the gun a little bit. So we're just on 45, 45, 90. So for this, if I know my leg is 18, one leg is 18, what does the other leg have to be? Is it 18 times square root of two? Oh, that's the hypotenuse. <laughs> what about this leg, though? Kelly, sorry, I think I talked over you. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't? Okay. All right, well, who can tell me what my other leg has to be, knowing that this leg is 18? 18. 18, good. And then Kelly, back with your answer, what does my hypotenuse have to be? 18 times root of 2. There you go, you got it. Okay, so we have 18, 18, and 18 root 2. Notice that this is so much faster than having to go through the entire process of using Pythagorean theorem and then simplifying things. So just make sure that if you're given a triangle and you know it's a special right triangle, use your rules because it's going to be a lot faster to come up with the answer. I'm going to go through and show you what the students are doing and what I can see on my end. So the students are all in groups of three and in their groups, they are working together. So I already see a couple students kind of went ahead and then went back. I do tell them that they need to work together and I do monitor and make sure that they're all on the same slide together. It looks like they're all doing good so far right now. The first slide is just a video and, and then they'll, they'll mute, watch the video and then answer the questions together. So that's kind of what I do on my end. I just monitor. What I will do is let's say like these X's show that the questions were incorrect or incorrectly answered. If I see that as a theme for a particular team of three, I'll go check into their breakout room. I'm not sure if I can record much of that interaction. It's something that I do, you know, pretty frequently is I just kind of do little check-ins. Students also will call me in if they have any questions using the ask for help feature. So it just pops up as a notification on my end in Zoom. So that's why I kind of have the Zoom in the top corner so it does notify me. So I'm just on this screen checking out where they are. If they're on a particular slide for a really long time, I will also go pop in and ask them questions. So this ESMO system works really well for remote learning with that. And it is really nice to give the students more of an exploration-based activity. It does give them a break from the constant battle of having to sit there and hear me lecture for hours on end while they're still you know they're still learning and it's nice too because with this type of learning they're doing more of a discovery based learning so they're trying things out they're kind of coming up with conjectures on their own and then it kind of midway through so I think on six it finally says hey like what you just did is actually trig and here is all of the information about these trig functions that you just did, and it puts a name connection to these ratios that they set up in the previous slide. So the whole thing is guiding them through, and I feel like through guided discovery, it actually helps them understand to a deeper degree. And actually on my other screen, I'm already seeing I have some students jumping ahead of their team. So I'm going to take a pause here and go deal with that. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm noticing on my end that a couple of teams, some of the students in the teams have the correct answer, others have the incorrect answer for one of them, but it's pretty consistent across the board where it's like 50-50, half of them seem to be getting the card sort, which is them in that slide in particular, they take all these cards that I give them and they sort them based on whether the highlighted side is the hypotenuse of the right triangle, the adjacent leg, they give them a reference angle as well, or the opposite leg, and we're 50-50 getting it. So I'm going to check in with these teens. As you can see, <laughs> just a side note before I jump into these rooms, these breakout room times are not like relaxing kickback times for teachers. I'm literally bouncing back and forth between breakout rooms, which 
And by the end of the day, after doing two block periods of this, it gets really draining. And these activities to make them work and work well and make sure you're checking in with everyone, it's a lot. Not that I'm complaining because I think the kids get way more out of it than just me talking at them for hours, but it's, it is kind of exhausting, <laughs> especially at the end of the day. Okay, so I'm gonna check in with this team. Hi guys. Hey. Oh, we're sharing our screen, nice. Good. I was just noticing on the card sort that some of them were incorrect, so this is actually good that you guys are working on that one together. So do you guys have an, a good idea of how to identify these things? Do you want me to re-explain it or did the... I was about to help them with it. Oh, okay. Really, yeah. Oh. So I was going to say, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just so like the adjacent one is the one that's touching the reference angle and then the opposite one is the one that's not touching it at all. Yes. Um, and then just just specify a little bit because remember that hypotenuse is always going to touch the reference angle. Yep. So just be careful when you're explaining it to talk about the hypotenuse too. But other than that, that's perfect. Yep. Great. I didn't even need to worry about your team. Okay, call me back over if you guys need anything. Okay. okay. All right. Now that is one of those moments I wish I could screen record and show you <laughs> what that looked like. I just went into the breakout room and one of my students had already screen shared the exact problem I was going to go check in with them on. So they were already communicating about how a couple of them weren't getting it and not getting the correct answer for the card sort. And one of the team members took initiative and was going to teach them all about it. Like, I wish I was in person because, like, it just, it's ten times more when you see that interaction with the teens and it's a little more natural than just popping. But it it's still working. I mean, the students are getting what they need. They are interacting to a degree. I mean, every room I've been in so far, none of the cameras were turned off. There was screen sharing happening. There's communication. So, so far it's going pretty well. <laughs> Okay, so I just got back from being called in that breakout room and I just realized, of course, I forgot to tell my students to leave their evaluations of the trig functions in fractions instead of they're just so addicted to like punching things in calculators and getting out a decimal that I want them to get familiar and used to recognizing that fractions are numbers and I completely blanked on telling them that before they went off so I went in to correct uh, actually the student that just called me in I went in to correct their problems and realized that they gave me all decimals oh I have another request um, so I'm gonna jump into another breakout room hello they're for sine, cosine, and tangent. So for those, are we, for at least for this part, are we just like filling them in with the four fits, or, or not four fits, but like with the actual like thing, or are we actually like putting it in a calculator, or are we not doing that yet? With the numbers. So just, you're just setting up the ratio. I think what you are okay, thinking, so I think what you were thinking of is when there are missing side lengths, you can use the trig to solve for them. But I gave you all the side lengths, so you're just setting up the ratio. And then just leave them in fractions. So it's easier for me when I go in, I can make sure you set up your opposite over adjacent or whatever correctly. Yeah. Okay. Was that it? Doing good so far? Okay. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Okay, <laughs> call me back over if you need me. It's like 11.43, we have, let's see, 18, like 28 minutes left in the period. They're right on track. A bunch of them are kind of like finishing up the last slide, it looks like. And once I go through and actually check all of their work and they're all good to start homework, they'll probably, if they finish early, they'll probably have like five, maybe 10 minutes to start the homework, which is basically just practice of what they've just discovered, I guess, in the guided activity. And then I'll be bringing them all back into the main Zoom room so that we can debrief the activity, I can kind of sum up what they got out of it, and then I'm also gonna do a little demonstration of what is to come. So how are we gonna be using these trick ratios? All right, so we have right triangle. And there's an angle that's not the 90 degree angle that we use 
to focus on. What is this angle called? Who remembers? The reference angle. The reference angle, good. So we can call this angle theta. This is the reference angle. And after we've chosen a theta, we can then tell our reader which, specifically which leg we might be talking about. This red leg that I just highlighted, what do we call that one? The adjacent leg. The adjacent leg, good. And what do we call this one? Let me choose a different color. This one right here. Opposite. This is the opposite leg. And finally, what is this one? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, good. Okay, so we have that. Then we discovered that there are three trig ratios that we can use and set up based on the triangle we're given. So if I have tangent of this reference angle theta, who remembers what this ratio was? Opposite over adjacent. Good, nice work. Opposite over adjacent. Okay, we had another one. Who can give me my other trig function? Another trig function. Cosinus? Uh, cosine, right, good. COS is cosine. So I can have cosine of theta. What is cosine equal to? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Good, adjacent over hypotenuse. And my last one. Can you give me my last one? My last trig function? Sine. Good, sine of theta. And then can you tell me what the ratio is, if you remember? Opposite over hypotenuse. You got it. All right, so trig's not all that bad. But right now you're probably thinking, well, how the heck are we gonna use this? So let me show you how we are gonna use this. And we're gonna use it specifically to solve for missing side lengths. So let's say, I'm gonna erase some stuff. I'm gonna erase this. Let's say that theta, instead of giving you theta, I said that this was 40 degrees, 40 degree angle. And I said, well, I don't know my opposite leg. I wanna solve for it, but I do know that my adjacent leg is three. Then you can say, well, I can solve for X by doing a ratio. Which one should I use if my X is my opposite leg and the value I know is my adjacent leg? Should I use tangent, cosine, or sine? Set up this ratio. Cosine. Do we know our hypotenuse? So there's kind of an issue here because we don't know the hypotenuse. Which one is the only one that doesn't have to, you don't have to know the hypotenuse? Tan. Tangent, good. So we're going to have to use tangent. So I'm going to say, well, tangent of my reference angle, which I know is 40 degrees, is equal to opposite, which is x, over my adjacent which is given as three. All right, well, so I'm gonna solve for X because that's my unknown. I'm gonna multiply both sides by three. And so then I have X equals three 
times the tangent of 40 degrees. I've just solved for a missing side length on a right triangle using trig. Now we can approximate this and I wanna quickly show you before we leave today how to do this on your calculator. Okay, so first thing you need to do before you do anything ever, you need to go into where it says mode, click mode and you it comes up with all this stuff right here, okay? Now you need to change it into degree mode. So if radian is highlighted, so if you, you hit the down arrow until you hit, if radian's highlighted, that's not what you want. You want to go over to where it says degree and hit enter and make sure degree is highlighted. That's because what we're using and what we're entering into our calculator are degrees. We're not using radians, we're using degrees. So that's the very first thing that you need to do before you are actually able to approximate your trig functions. So then you can hit second quit to get out of that menu once you've done that. Okay, so we were doing three, so hit three times the tangent of 40, 40 degrees. And then you hit enter and it will approximate. So that the length of that missing side length, the length of my side that was opposite of my reference angle is about 2.517, right? So I'm gonna go back to my iPad screen and we're gonna write that down. We'll say about 2.5. So this is how we're going to be using these trig functions and trig ratios that you just learned about for solving right triangles. So we'll have another tool in our tool belt, so to speak, to solve for missing side lengths on right triangles. Okay. So we're gonna be doing more with this next class. You have some practice tonight for homework and then some notes for your independent learning assignment on this. All right, so I ended the class period with answering a few final questions after doing the debrief, and then I gave them their independent learning assignment and their due dates for homework and all that fun stuff, and that is about it. So that is what my classes look like pretty much every day. Just maybe there's a little bit more lecture sometimes. It just kind of depends what our need is, but that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoy.